Hey, what's going on, fam? It's Don here from Peggy and the Don. Um, Y'all know we had a pretty good time out there in, on the campsite trying to do our little uh, improving our survival skills. Um, but one of the questions that a lot of people gave us was, what it would take? What would it take for us to uh, go out there overnight? And are we prepared to be out there overnight? Um, so I asked Peggy what kind of things she'd be looking for. She said she just wants something that she'd be able to get in and out of. And that was kind of sealed off from the elements like rain and also creatures, bugs and spiders and stuff like that, keeping that out. So for me, um, I would think ideally we would want to have something like the one we saw out there, one of these little tents that's just small, compact with a sealed floor. Um, I felt like we'll be able to pack this up and put that in our survival bag some kind of way or at least attach it to our survival bag. But we have to be... Uh, logical we have to be uh reasonable with ourselves and realize that i am a man of a certain age and a certain size and trying to get in and out of that straight from the ground from laying on the ground in one of these little tents is not ideal for my situation so we're going out to do an overnight and the tent we chose was this uh coleman uh i guess they call it a four-person cabin instant cabin or something like that so I'm going to take Trey out there. We're going to go ahead and set one up in our backyard. Now, y'all know our backyard is full of spiders. So if I, could, if I could set it up in the backyard and keep the spiders out, I'll feel very confident taking Peggy out. And then we can go ahead and do our overnight stay, our very first overnight stay in the woods. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out. I guess I'll um, take it out of the box, do a little unboxing, set it up, and then do a review. I'm actually looking forward to this a little bit. We got a couple other items that Peg got. Peg got an inflatable lounge chair that she wants to put inside the tent as well, too. So I'll be setting that up. So let's go ahead and get started. So here it is. We, here's the box that it came in. We got ordered ours from Amazon. Um, I know they sell them all over the place, but it was in a pretty small size. I know I shouldn't be using a knife to cut the box open, but I was very careful. So once I pulled out the box, it revealed this uh, little uh, carrying case uh, with the straps and everything. Decent build, decent materials. So I just had to unzip it and pull out the actual tent itself. Now, I took a good look at this because <laughs> as I later learned, you will never get it back to look at this neat. I don't care how hard you try, but it looks good right now. And it came with a warranty sheet. Um, and this is the uh, setup instruction sewn into the inside of the case, so you'll never lose it. That's pretty good. That's a good idea to have that there. I was looking around for some spikes, some stakes, or some guidelines, but I didn't find anything. So Trey and I dragged it out. Well, not dragged it out. Pretty light. I could have carried it out myself, but uh, took it out into the middle of the backyard and... Uh, untied it and started just pulling it apart. I didn't even read the instructions, which is such a guy thing to do. And I found the stakes. Here they are. They were wrapped up on the inside of the tent. So what I did was just start opening it up and just put carefully just separating the uh, parts and the flaps. And it just like intuitively just came up to where it should be. I had Trey grab one side out there in the field. That would be Peggy grabbing the other side. And once we pulled the legs apart, it was basically almost set up. It took us a little while to figure out how to extend the legs, but Trey found it first. All you had to do was just lift up on it. I thought it'd be like a button or something like that, but it just started pulling it apart and then it clicks into place. So the first time we did it, it didn't click. But after I pulled this leg all the way up, it did click in place and I told Trey what to do. And then we went back and did the uh, back legs again. Get the nice click. So we wanted to orient to where the front of the uh, tent would be facing the uh, camera. So we just lift it up and turn around. It weighs hardly anything. It's still a two-person job because of how large it is, but it weighs hardly anything at all. So I started staking down the base of the tent. Uh, there's little hook straps on each corner of the tent. 
Um, our ground is pretty soft, so I was worried that the stakes would get pulled out or just pull come out on their own through the wind. But I just made sure I put it in at an angle towards the tent, and uh, they just they stayed in the entire time. Um, I was looking for the guidelines, and here they are. They're already tied to the uh, four loops. The loops on all four corners of the tent. Um, originally, I was not going to use the guidelines, but I'm glad I went ahead and put them on. I think you should always use the guidelines, even on a non-windy day, because the wind picked up several times. And if, if I didn't have the guidelines, I might have damaged the tent or it might have blew away or something like that. So I'm going to always use the guidelines whenever I set this tent up. But all in all, I was pretty happy with it. Here you get a good idea about how tall it is. I'm six feet tall. I'm not gonna be able to stand straight up on the inside of the tent, but there's plenty of headroom, especially compared to the improvised shelter that we used out in the field the other day. All right, fam. I'm coming to you from inside the Coleman Instant Cabin. Um, so far, I am loving this tent. Now I realize it's brand new. <laughs> and you love brand new stuff but it's got three screen walls where you can lower the flaps to like let wind go through and you can zip up the flaps let me go ahead and zip this one up yeah zip up the flaps that's facing the sun so so it gives you a little shade so I can have cross breezes from the side because it's not facing the sun and the part facing the sun stays up and it keeps it nice and cool in here. That's the first thing I like about it. And of course, another positive is the space. Uh, I've already showed you how tall it was, but it, it just seems so much bigger from the inside. I am sitting on Peggy's little inflatable lounge chair in one corner of the tent and there is plenty of room around here now i realize that unless i get myself my own lounge chair this is probably the last time i'll be sitting on it but it is very comfortable it is very relaxing and there's plenty of room i don't feel cramped at all i see one bug one bug has gotten in but i feel like it got in because i just had the uh flap open but it seems very well sealed off and everything um, now the floor, the floor feels like the exact same material that we got from Walmart, the uh, tarp that we use for our improvised shelter. It feels like the exact same material. So that is waterproof, right? But, um, I feel like it might be prone to ripping or tearing. I don't want to say it is because like I said, it hasn't done it yet. But once Peggy and I set this up, we're going to be setting up on top of our uh, tarp maybe even fold it in half to give it a little added protection between it and the ground. Just to make sure, like I said, it just feels like the same kind of material as the uh, medium duty uh, tarp that I got from Walmart for seven bucks. And so another thing I wanna say about the floor size, it is eight feet by seven feet, which is plenty enough room for a queen size bed. Now we won't be able to bring the inflatable lounge in there at the same time as the queen size bed, but the thing I'm thinking about is you want to get a battery operated pump because you're not going to be able to inflate the bed and bring it in here through any of these little doors that I can see. Now I might be wrong. I guess the whole entire bottom unzips, but no, it doesn't. It's not a, it's not a full connection. So you will want to get your battery operated uh, mattress pump and inflate it after you get it on the inside. But just a just a word of advice so far but the floor space is plenty enough size for it got a couple extra overlapping seams and everything so it's not exactly like the uh medium duty tarp but like i say just feel like it's the same material and I, I i'll feel more comfortable with a little added protection between me and the ground between me peggy and the ground so that's another point i gotta look into when i get ready to set up but honestly I'm ready to take this thing out to the woods and uh, do a little overnight camping. All right, fam, I'm back. I've been out here for about 45 minutes. Um, 
I'm gonna say this the sunshade idea really works it's about 72 73 degrees out here which is not very warm at all but when I had the flash down it was getting warmer and warmer um, because of the compact size if Peggy and I are in here I really feel like we'll be able to stay warm with maybe just a little some pocket warmers and a couple of sleeping bags on our air matches we'll be able to keep each other warm um, my concern is in the summertime trying to stay cool um, probably should place it somewhere under some shaded area or something like that because it really does get, get some heat in here especially when you reach your hand up toward the top the top is even warmer than down here but right down here where I am I feel very comfortable and the wind just feels so good there's the wind now <laughs> it feels so good in here probably a few degrees cooler than outside now because of the little sunshade flap idea so I'll be doing that I wonder how it's gonna feel when it gets to like a hundred and something degrees outside or at least in the 90s this summertime I got to get a shaded area probably get a cooler in here with some ice and maybe one oh we're getting a solar powered fan I mean a rechargeable fan so we'll probably have the rechargeable fan in here um, so after the 45 50 minutes so far the bug count still sits at one dead bug so Peggy be glad to hear that uh, I guess another thing I like about this tent is how this, uh, this might be the normal for all the tent I don't know but there's something I just noticed uh, the, f the floor material is not sewn to these walls at the bottom it curves up first and then sewn to the walls a couple inches above the uh, surface level and got this nice double stitching with a different kind of material for the stitching the stitches are very close together very tight almost like one solid piece of string that the stitching is so tight so that makes me feel a little more confident in the construction of this tent um, everywhere I look I see the same kind of double stitching on everything around the zippers all that good stuff so I feel I feel I feel very confident in the construction of this thing um yeah that's about it so only thing I do now is uh try to take it down see if I can pack it back up into the little bag it came in and uh break the news to Peggy that we're gonna be spending some gonna be spending at least one night out there in the woods <laughs> she's gonna make sure we have our air mattress and everything else but I feel like we got no excuse we're gonna go out there and Maybe it's maybe it's glamping. I don't know. It's somewhere between survival and glamping. But I'm loving it. This is this is a comfort spot for us. This is a comfort zone for us. Uh, so that's about all I have. If I had to recommend this. I will I will recommend the uh, Coleman four person instant cabin. But I'll I'll be able to give a better recommendation after we take it out for a night or so. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for the uh, tent and the uh, inflatable lounge, which. I'm 270 pounds and I feel 100% comfortable in this. I'm 6 foot 270, feel very comfortable in this lounge, so I would recommend this too. So we got to get a few more items to pack up and then we'll be heading out to the woods again. Looking forward to it. So thanks for joining me fam and I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Hey, go out there and do something good for yourself and for others as well. Y'all take it easy fam. So before I go, I just wanted to share with you guys about how it went when I was trying to break this shelter down, break the tent down by myself. I started off with the guidelines and uh, tried to make sure that I secured each one, tied them up nice and neat. I didn't want them tangling with the uh, spring-loaded uh, frame um, so it wouldn't be a problem breaking any of the joints the next time I tried to set it up. So I made sure that each one of the uh, guidelines were tied nice and secure. I hit the little click on each one of the uh, extendable legs and I started pulling the stakes out from each corner of the tent. Um, the, one of the stakes got bent, uh, but that's not going to be a problem. They're not that expensive. So I pulled the stakes out from the corners and I wonder why it wouldn't collapse. And I'm just sitting here struggling with it, just like, okay, what did I do wrong? Did I get a dud? Why won't this thing collapse? And I did all kinds of stuff. I rolled it around and I realized, oh, I left the inflatable lounge in there. And so then I had no problem uh, collapsing it down, pressing down on the top joint, and then pulling the outer leg towards the middle. 
I laid it on the side and rolled it up. But like I said, it ended up being nowhere near as neat as when I took it out of the bag. Thanks, Trey, for showing up late. Take me your arms. Do just what you want. You're the one to try.